before my Let's Play video, I decided to reflect a little bit about Dark Souls because I believe it has a very special place in the medium of gaming and also in many players' hearts, including mine. Before I get into the meat of the information, I want to give a little bit of background information. So the game was developed by From Software, who was somewhat known for making Demon Souls, a game that was made to test out multiplayer functionality in an action role-playing game environment, and built the structure that would lead to the creation of the Dark Souls franchise, which was released on September 22, 2011, to high praise from many gaming outlets, giving the game a 9 out of 10 saying the game is brutal and punishing, but at the same time, the most thrilling adrenaline rush in gaming. The gameplay that you'd be seeing is actually my own. I decided to play a new character and I decided to challenge myself to run naked across the map uh, to keep it a bit interesting. So enjoy. There are three pillars that hold Dark Souls to a higher standard compared to many other games. And those are the experiences the players have, the mastery of the use of difficulty, and the community that is built due to the difficulty and the unique experiences each player has going through the world in their own unique way. Firstly, when looking at the experiences a player might have, they might go through the emotions of confusion, dread, and intrigue. Daniel Vela, who is a lecturer at the Institute of Digital Games at the University of Malta, focused on a study of the unknown in Dark Souls. He speaks about the unknowability being the key factor that led the player to a sublime state of mind in which the player's imagination runs wild with the thoughts and guesses of what is to come. Relating to Daniel, the player is left to their own thoughts and ambitions when playing the game, which lets the player experience the game in the way they want to without any forceful tutorials. The player's imagination is left to run wild trying to figure out what must be done to progress. When I originally played Dark Souls in 2011, I was so scared to do anything in the game because I knew one wrong move means I would lose whatever I earned and I would have to trek across the map to get my items back. Even though I was scared, my fears of the unknown didn't hold me back and I wanted to overcome my fears, to experience what the game had to offer and while doing so, I died many times and I even gave up for a day or two, but I always came back to venture forth to beat another boss and feel the rush of excitement when I finally mastered the situation at hand. The next pillar is difficulty. Dark Souls always gets flack for being a difficult game that is punishing and said to be unfair. <laughs> But the individuals who play the game know that that isn't entirely true. Yes, the game is difficult, but it is definitely not unfair. The difficulty and player options are finely tuned and hidden around the world, which make a supposedly impossible task trivial at best. As you can see with me demonstrating this when fighting the tutorial boss, the Asylum Demon, I was having difficulty damaging the boss with my broken sword, but when I started to throw the black fire bombs, I got when I made my character, the boss fell with a few bombs. Josh Call, a professor and chair of the English department at Grand View University, speaks about the immersion and engagement that difficulty provides and it related to the enjoyment of games. He states that study, practice, and iteration of response to the situation and the consistent application and management of these basic tasks give the sense of reward to the players. Dark Souls has a built-in hard, medium, and easy mode, which can be achieved by studying the enemies at hand and practicing by fighting the enemies over and over and learning about the different weapons and items that are left around the world for the player to use to overcome the situation at hand. When the player first starts the game, they will be in the hard mode phase in which nothing is known and through trial and error they must keep trying to overcome the obstacles. After gaining some experience with the way the game works and knowing the controls, the player is at a medium difficulty phase in which the player knows how their character works and to always keep your guard up but still have the fear of the unknown as they go along their journey. And finally comes the easy mode phase in which the player has beaten most of the game or even the whole game and knows little secrets around the world that make the hardest of challenges extremely easy, as seen in my gameplay when I use items to defeat strong enemies such as the Asylum Demon, Taurus Demon, and the Armored Demon Pig. A unique way Dark Souls balances its difficulty and player help comes in the form of its checkpoint system, where every time the player uses a checkpoint, also known as a bonfire, the player replenishes all their healing potions, but at the same time, all the regular enemies in the world reset and all come back to life. Nash Mead, 
of the Middle State Tennessee State University states that the Souls games radically twist the eternal recurrence formula. However, creating not only a critique of its heralding by authors like Camus and Nietzsche, but also showing just how potent the very notion of eternal is in the face of other facets of being. The bonfire system of cyclicality has story beats that were woven in to make sense in the world, but the main purpose was to let the player practice and master their skill set and to gain currency by defeating the enemies. Finally comes the pillar of community, which is a culmination of the first two pillars of experience and difficulty. When the game originally came out, many players were having difficulty piecing the story together and figuring out how to get through certain areas or defeat bosses. Due to this, many players went online to forums asking for help and slowly all the answers moved to sites such as YouTube, where YouTubers such as Vatividya, Rurikan, and Epic Namebro made a name for themselves and were seen as the guiding beacons of the community. Each of them focused on different aspects of the game. Vati Vidya focused on story and lore. Rurikan focused on game mechanics and statistics. And Epic Namebro, who was actually my first guide into Dark Souls, focused on playthroughs that showed hidden items around the game world. As the game got popular, many more players who had a passion for the world of Dark Souls went online to talk about their experiences and theories of the story, which I personally believe is the reason why the game became so famous and has sequels and soul successors that are winning Game of the Year titles. In conclusion, the pillars of experience, difficulty, and community hold up what made Dark Souls unique in its time. These aspects had a strong relation to the way we as humans go through our day-to-day -day lives. Every day we have the fear of the unknown, and even me as a student has the fear of being successful in my future endeavors. I have to figure out my own way out through trial and error and slowly gain the information to persevere and master myself in a world with the help of the individuals around me. This subliminal relation to our reality hides in the guise of a game and does the unthinkable in which any other game could be seen as an escape from reality and the difficulties of life, while Dark Souls channel the difficulties of our day-to-day -day life into a form of art in which we take our character through the trials and tribulations that we psychologically go through on a day-to-day -day basis, but made it entertaining to feel the emotions and to persevere to achieve greatness. So, with that said and done, that concludes my Let's Play of Dark Souls and why I believe it holds a special place in the medium of gaming. Have a great day and I hope everyone gets a chance to play Dark Souls and to experience what I and many others have experienced. Bye now.